What's going on everybody? This is Lag on Lock here and welcome back to the BYU Cougars Dynasty here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. Taking a look at the ESPN Mac for this week, Buckeyes notch a conference win against number 10 Northwestern. So guys, the Buckeyes defeated Northwestern 19-7. Northwestern could have won this game. They played a little bit better on offense. They only scored seven points and that was just in the first quarter. The players of the game, we have Rice from Northwestern who had eight tackles, two of those tackles being for loss, a sack and an interception. And then for the Buckeyes, they have Harris, who had three receptions for 38 yards and two touchdowns. And then he had 22 carry, uh, carries for 103 yards. So now the Ohio State Buckeyes, they move on to 11-0 this year, still undefeated as North uh, Northwestern, they fall to 9-2. Uh, and two. So guys, in the last video, we were able to defeat the Wyoming Cowboys 23 to 21 in the rivalry. It was a pretty close game all the way down to the wire, but our defense stood their ground to prevent them from scoring in the last few seconds of the game. Taking a look at the players of the game, we have Dallas Johnson, who went eight for 13 for 277 yards. He scored two to, well, he threw two touchdowns. He had six carries for 34 yards. And then for Wyoming, they have McCauley, who had two receptions for 86 yards and he scored two touchdowns. Taking a look at in-season recruiting, Dominique Cook still hasn't decided what team he wants to play for. I know I keep repeating this over and over each week, but it's bugging me because we're pretty much close to the end. I only have two games left this season. Terrence Armstrong, he did sign with the Texas A&M Aggies, so good on him. So now, guys, we're going to take a look at the top 25 polls here. And at number one, we have the Miami Hurricanes. They defeated the Terrapins 21-18. At number two, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes, who defeated North Northwestern 19-7. Number three, we have the Boise State Broncos. They defeated San Jose State 45-21. At number four, we have the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They defeated Air Force 34-3. At number five, we have the Louisville Cardinals who beat uh, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights 2017. At number six, we have the Florida State Seminoles who beat Wake Forest 42-20. At number seven, we have Cal Golden Bears. They defeated Arizona 24-3. At number eight, we have the USC, Tro USC Trojans. They beat Oregon 31-28. At number nine, we have the Georgia Bulldogs. They defeated Auburn 24-17. At number 10, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks. They beat Florida 24-17. At number 11, we have the Tennessee Volunteers. They defeated Arkansas 38-21. At number 12, we have the LSU Tigers. They defeated Alabama 24-21. At number 13, we have the Northwestern Wildcats, and we all know they lost to the Buckeyes 19-7. At number 14, we have the uh, Michigan Wolverines. They defeated um, Indiana 26-0. At number 15, we have the UTEP Miners. They beat UAB. At number 16, we have the Colorado Buffaloes. They beat Iowa State 30-27. At number 17, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils. They beat Washington State 40-20. At number 18, we have the Fighting Illini. They beat Purdue 23-21. At number 19, we have the Boston College Eagles. They defeated Duke 2019. At number 20, we have the Virginia Tech Hogies. They lost to Kent State in an upset, losing 26-23. At number 21, we have the Penn State Nitty Lions. Now, I've been waiting for this team to get in the top 25 because they've been beating ranked teams, but every time they would beat one, they would just lose their next game. But they beat Temple 22-13. At number 22, we have the Colorado State Rams. They lost to Utah 31-17. So if they lose one more and we just win the rest of our games, our conference games, we will win the Mountain West. At number 23, we have the Texas Longhorns. They are now back in the top 25 after defeating Kansas State 28-0. At number 24, we have the Ole Miss Rebels who are now in after having a bye week. And then at 25, we have the Houston Cougars. They are now ranked after beating SMU 40-17. Taking a look at the additional details here, we have Oregon, Toledo, North Carolina State, Clemson, Pitt, and Tulsa. And the only team that was dropped out was number 21, Oregon, number 20, Toledo, number 19, Clemson, and number 24, Wisconsin. So now guys, we're gonna take a look at the bowl projections. For this year, this is my favorite part of the season. In the first bowl game, we have the Poinsettia Bowl. I think that's how you pronounce it. We have the BYU Cougars against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. This will be the rematch that I was looking forward to because Tulsa, they won that game versus us over some BS. I'm not going to lie. Next, we have the GMAC Bowl between the Northern Illinois Huskies and the ECU Pirates. 
In the Las Vegas Bowl, we have the Colorado State Rams against the UCLA Bruins. I like the logos on these bowl games, man. It's so vintage. Uh, in the New Orleans Bowl, we have the Mid-Tennessee State Blue Raiders against the Tulane Green Wave. In the Fort Worth Bowl, Fort Worth, Fort, I can't talk. Fort Worth Bowl. There we go. We have the UTEP Miners against the TCU Horn Frogs. In the Hawaii Bowl, we have the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs against the Stanford Cardinal. In the Motor City Bowl, we have the Toledo Rockets taking on the Wisconsin Badgers. In the Independence Bowl, we had the Fresno State Bulldogs against the Buffalo Bulls. I wish it would show their record for both teams. You know, I know you need six games to be bowl eligible, but I just want to see their record. I think the only reason not doing this is because it's not the final projections. In the Emerald Bowl, we have the FIU Panthers, Golden Panthers, excuse me, friend and Golden Panther fans out there, versus the Virginia Cavaliers. In the NPC Computers Bowl, what the heck is that? We have the Utah State Aggies against the Boston College Eagles. In the Holiday Bowl, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils against the Texas Longhorns. In the Music City Bowl, we have the NC State Wolfpack against the Arkansas Razorbacks. In the Sun Bowl, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers against the Oregon Ducks. In the Champ Sports Champ Sports Bowl, man, I cannot talk today. We have the Clemson Tigers taking on the fight in Illini. In the Mastercard Alamo Bowl, we have the Penn State Nitty Lions against the Kansas State Wildcats. In the Car Care Bowl, we have the Connecticut Huskies taking on the North Texas Mean Green. In the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, we have the Houston Cougars against the Ball State Cardinals. In the Houston Bowl, we have the SMU Mustangs against the New Mexico State Aggies. In the Chick-fil-A Bowl, we have the Virginia Tech Hoagies taking on the number 9 Georgia Bulldogs. In the Insight Bowl, we have West Virginia Mountaineers taking on Oregon State. In the Outback Bowl, we have the Michigan Wolverines against the Tennessee Volunteers. In the AT&T Cotton Bowl, we have the Missouri Tigers taking on the Ole Miss Rebels. In the Gator Bowl, we have the Wake Forest Demon Deacons against the Kansas Jayhawks. In the Capital One Bowl, we have the Northwestern Wildcats against the LSU Tigers. In the Rose Bowl, we have the USC Trojans taking on the Fighting Irish. In the Fiesta Bowl, we have the Cal Golden Bears against the Colorado Buffaloes. In the Orange Bowl, we have the Louisville Cardinals taking on the Boise State Broncos. That's if they can make it into the National Championship. I think they have a good chance of making it. In the Sugar Bowl, we have the Florida State Seminoles taking on the South Carolina Gamecocks. And then last in the National Championship, we have the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes. So this week, guys, we're taking on the 3-7 and seven New Mexico Lobos. They are 1-5 and five in conference play. When it comes to their injured players, they have Paolo, their defensive end, who's out for three weeks. Thomas, who is their tackle, who's out for the season. Akindona, their outside linebacker, who's out for a week. And then they have Vinson, their halfback, who's out for the season. Wow, a lot of players injured there. In their last game, they lost to TCU 41-17. When it comes to their offensive leaders and passing, they have Poe, who has 150 completions out of 254 attempts for 1,739 yards. He has 15 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Rushing, they have McPherson, who has 125 attempts for 538 yards, averaging 4.3. He has six touchdowns this year and averaging 76.9 yards per game. When it comes to receiving, they have Carrington, who has 42 receptions for 627 yards. He's averaging 14.9 per catch. He has eight touchdowns and he's averaging 62.7 yards per game. Taking a look at their defensive leaders, they have Akindona, who's leading in tackles with 75. He's also leading in sacks with nine, but he is out for this week, so that's pretty good on us. And then they have Marshall, who's leading their team in interceptions with two. So that's going to do it for the team information for the New Mexico Lobos. I'll see you guys out there on the field.
So here we are guys back at home again to take on the New Mexico Lobos. Now they are one in five when it comes to conference play, so this should be an easy game for the Cougars. Anyway guys, let's go ahead and get started. It's gonna be second and seven now after that screenplay. Johnson steps back, throws to the left, tries to find someone, throws it to Bonet who makes the catch. And that's gonna be a first down for the Cougars. And now it's gonna be first and 10 at the 40 yard line. Johnson. Throws to his left, throws it, and Session couldn't make the catch. Now, if you guys remember, Dallas Johnson was the player of the game in our last game versus the Cowboys. Let's see what he can do in this game. We're going to throw it to Morris, and Morris gets the touchdown. <laughs> An amazing 40-yard touchdown pass for Dallas Johnson after I just got done talking about how well he did in this last game to get player of the game. As you see, look at this. Just threw it downfield to Morris, who was able to keep his speed inbound, and now it's going to be first and 10 for the New Mexico Lobos. Play action. Poe has it. He's going to take it for himself. Good spin move, and John Joy is able to bring him down. It looks like an eight-yard pickup on that one. No, it's a nine-yard pickup. It's going to be second and one. And on second and one, Poe, play action. Throws it downfield. It's intercepted by Cross. Cross gets the interception. And our defense is continuing to do their thing throughout this season. It's going to be first and 10 for BYU. And it's off this session. And session, he's just going to run out of bounds. And now it's going to be second and six. A four-yard pickup on that one. Johnson. Option play. And I don't know why I pitched it. Wait a minute. Session breaks a tackle. And it's going to be third and inches. Can we get a first down here? Hands off the session again, and he does get the first down. We're going to be spotted at the 43-yard line. Play action. Stop right there. And Come Dallas Johnson is going to get sacked on that one by Smith. It's going to be second and 17. Johnson. Rolls to the right. Sees Thomas. And batted down by the defender. That could have been intercepted there. It's going to be third and 17 now. Johnson. Rolls to the right again. Sees Gabe Thomas, and what? He couldn't make the catch. Just fell out of his hand. And now we're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and 10 for the New Mexico Lobos at the 26-yard line. Poe, play action. Throws it to Rose. He takes a big hit. I was surprised he was able to hold on to it, but <laughs> it's going to be first and 10 now. Poe steps back, and it's going to be intercepted by Tommy Bain. And that's his fourth interception of the year. He's tied second in the conference, which is pretty good. I don't know what the quarterback was doing. He just threw it as soon as he hiked the ball. And now it's going to be first and 10 for BYU. Johnson. Steps back, rolls to the left, sees Miller. And Miller couldn't make the catch. And now it's going to be second and 10 with only 48 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Johnson, play action, rolls to the right. Tries to find someone. See Zach Bonet, and he can't get it. And now it's going to be third and 10. Johnson rolls to his left this time. Tries to find someone open. Throws it to Morris. Gets a good block. Juke move, and he gets brought down. If he got past that defender, that could have been six. Option play. And it's going to be a fumble. Bad pitch. And now it's going to be second and 15 with only 10 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Johnson rolls to the left, tries to find someone, sees Whitworth, and it's going to be intercepted by Montgomery. A bad pass right there. That's going to be our first turnover of the game. As this guy is going to dance his way straight into the second quarter with the score BYU 7 and New Mexico Lobo 0. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 20 yard line after the interception. Poe. Stop right and there. he's going to get stop. sacked on that one by Rutledge. Good job for him. It's going to be second and 15. Poe throws it to Carrington. And it looks like he got the first down. And he does. That's going to be New Mexico's fourth first down of the game. Poe, play action, throws it. And Rowe was able to make the catch. Another first down for the New Mexico Lobos. Poe, 
Throws it, and it's going to be intercepted by John Joyce. User pick. Good job right there for John Joyce to get that pick, man. The quarterback got too comfortable trying to get these first downs, and John Joyce was just sitting there waiting in the middle. He read the quarterback and was able to get the interception. And now it's going to be first and 10 for BYU. Johnson hands off the session, and he gets tackled at the line of scrimmage. Actually, he does get one yard on that play. It's going to be second and nine at the 46-yard line. Johnson rolls to the left, throws it to Morris. I don't know why you died for it. You could have just caught it. I mean, catch it, but whatever. You could have just caught it just normal. <laughs> Johnson rolls to the left, throws it to Morris. Morris makes the catch one-handed, and this is going to be first and 10 for BYU at the 12-yard line. We are in the red zone. Johnson throws it to Gabe Thomas, and he takes a big hit, but he's able to hold on to it. It's going to be second and one. Session juke move and he gets brought down. It's gonna be third and one And on third and one we're gonna hand off to Witherspoon who tries to run up the middle But he couldn't get it. It's gonna be fourth and one now as now we got to go ahead and kick a field goal It's gonna be a 20-yard field goal attempt The kick is up and the kick is good that's going to lead us straight into halftime with the score of BYU Cougars 10, the New Mexico Lobos 0. So we're doing pretty well so far in this game. We have 154, wait, 154 total yards and 5 first downs. It's going to be first and 10 for the Lobos. They're going to hand off to McPherson, who's trying to break free. And he's a pretty fast running back. First and 10 now. Poe hands up to McPherson. McPherson hurdles, and he hurdles again, and he's going to cut to the right. He's going to cut up field, and he's going to get in for six. I don't know what the defense was doing, but now the score is 10-7. We're going to have the session. He's trying to do the same thing, but he gets brought down. And hold up, guys. There is a flag down the play. Let's see who it's on. And it's going to be offsides by Horn. It's going to be first and five now. Johnson rolls to the left. See Session. Session's able to make the catch. And it's going to be a first down. First and 10 at the 45 yard line. Johnson tries to find someone, throws it to Howell, who makes the catch, and he gets a first down. Okay, that's going to be another first down for BYU as Dallas Johnson has four consecutive completions. Johnson rolls to the right, trying to find someone, and he's. What? He fumbles the football. I thought that was a down ball. <laughs> he fumbled the football. And now the New Mexico Lobos, they get a fumble recovery. And this thing is going the other way. Man, I thought that was a dead ball. I didn't know they was going to say it was a fumble. I thought he threw it in front of him. Poe, he's going to take it for himself. And he gets brought down. He gets a couple yards on that one. It's going to be second and eight. And on second and eight. Poe steps back. Tries to find someone. And he does with Carrington. And that's going to be a first down. He steps out of bounds. So it's going to stop the clock. Poe hands off to McPherson. And McPherson is brought down. Looks like a three-yard pickup on that one. Second and seven. We're going to toss it to McPherson. And he gets tackled behind line of scrimmage. Third and eight now. Poe, play action. Tries to find someone, throw it across the middle to Rowe, who makes the catch. Another catch by Rowe. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 24 yard line for New Mexico uh, Lobos. Our defense need to do better. They're going to hand off to McPherson, who jukes. And he gets a first down. Good juke by uh, McPherson. Poe steps back, throws it, screen play, but it's an incomplete. What? That should have been a fumble. That should have been a fumble, but hey, I'm not a referee, so I can't call it. It's going to be second and 10 now with only uh, less than a minute left in the third quarter. Play action. They're going to throw it, and it's an incomplete pass. Wheatley, with uh, he almost got a pick on that one. It's going to be third and 10. Poe, he's going to take it for himself. 
and he gets a few yards on that one. Now it's going to be fourth and four. They're going to have to kick a 24-yard field goal attempt. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. Nearly blocked on that one. It's going to be first and ten for BYU. Johnson rolls to the left, tries to find someone. See Zach Bonet who makes the catch. And it's going to be first and ten now for BYU with only ten seconds left to go. We're going to hit up the session. Spin move. I don't know why I did a spin move. All I had to do was run up the middle. I guess I thought one of the defenders was going to break free. <laughs> But anyway, that's going to be the end of the third quarter with the score tied 10-10. And now we're going to head into the fourth quarter. It's going to be second and 10. Play action. Johnson throws it to Whitworth, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. It's going to be third and 10. Now, we are three of five when it comes to third down conversion. Let's see if we can get it. Throws it to Session, and he can't make the catch. We're, we are going to go three and out. Excuse me. It's going to be first and ten for the Lobos. Play action. Poe throws it to Glory. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> and he gets the first down. First and ten now. Play action. Throws it. And I don't know who he's throwing it to. Is that an incomplete pass? It's going to be second and ten. McPherson and he's tackled behind line of scrimmage good stop for Eddie Jones he has four tackles so far in this game now it's going to be third and 13 at the 50 yard line Poe steps back tries to find someone and it's another incomplete pass they're going to go three and out it's going to be first and 10 for BYU this is a very close game stop right there, and stop. Johnson gets brought down <laughs> Man, he gets sacked as soon as he hiked the ball. It's going to be second and 13. Johnson rolls to the left. Tries to find someone. Throws it to Morris. And he makes the catch. And he's going downfield. No one's able to stop him. And that's going to be a touchdown for BYU. An 83-yard touchdown pass. Now, I thought that was going to get picked off. Because the way I threw it and the number of defenders down there. Look at that. Caught over two defenders. And he's going to go in for six. And now the score is 17 to 10. Can the Lobos <laughs> score? I'm going to hand off to McPherson. McPherson has open space. And he's going to get brought down. Now it's going to be first and 10 at the 40 yard line. They have two minutes left to go in this quarter. McPherson. And he gets tripped up a little bit, breaks a tackle, he's stuck, and he gets brought down. I was about to say, if he broke free from that, I was going to be upset. But look at that, guys. We have negative two rushing yards in this game. I was surprised we're winning right now. It's going to be first and ten. Post, that's back. Throws it. Short pass to Glory. And it's going to be first and ten. That's going to be New Mexico's 13th first down. He's going to throw it to Rowe. Rowe makes the catch, and he gets brought down. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Can they score? He's going to hand it to McPherson. Stop right it looks there. like an HP stop. pass, but McPherson, I guess he was kind of confused on what to do. And now it's going to be second and 17. They have less than a minute to score. Poe throws it, and it's an incomplete pass. It's third and 17. They need to play a little bit smarter if they want to win this game. Poe. Throws it downfield, and wow, we didn't get the interception. It's going to be fourth and 17. They have to get it here. Stop right there. And Poe's going to get sacked. And what a bad way to go out, man. Their offensive line couldn't hold our defensive line, man. And that's going to be a sack. Good job by the defense. And now that's going to be the end of the game with the score BYU 17. The Lobos 10, man. That was a close conference game. I thought that was going to be an easy game where we, we can score at least 30 points. But anyway, guys, we're going to take a look at the lag unlock player of the game. And you already know who it is. It's number 31, Marcus Morris, man. The senior redshirt wide receiver. He had four receptions for 185 yards and two touchdowns. He was out there playing like Randy Moss, man. That's crazy. But anyway, guys, that's going to uh, do it for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. 
So guys, we defeated New Mexico 17-10. When it comes to first downs, they had 14, we had 10. Total offense, New Mexico had 260, we had 300. They rushed 17 times and got 130 yards. We rushed 15 times and only got 12 yards today. When it comes to passing, they have eight completions out of eight attempts. We had 10 uh, completions out of 19 attempts and scored two touchdowns. The Lobos had 130 yards passing. We had 288. We were able to get to their quarterback two times. Uh, they sacked us three times. Third down conversions, New Mexico was one and four. We were three and seven. New Mexico was in the red zone one time and kicked a field goal. We were in the red zone two times and kicked a field goal as well. When it comes to turnovers, uh, they had three turnovers. We had two. We fumbled the ball two times and lost it once. They threw three interceptions. We threw one. Total yards, they had 358. We had 360. Time of possession, they had 835. We had 725. Taking a look at individual stats, Dallas Johnson had a 204 QB rating. He had 10 completions out of 19 attempts, 288 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and a 52 completion percentage. Moving over to rushing, Session had 26 yards today, averaging 2.6. When it comes to receiving, Marcus Morris had four receptions for 185 yards. Zach Bonet had two receptions for 55. Nate Session had two receptions for 26. Michael Howell had one reception for 13. Gabe Thomas had one reception for nine. Marcus Morris scored two touchdowns today. Looking at our defense, Eric Jones, the senior left outside linebacker, led our team in tackles with four. Tackle for loss leader, we have Dennis Rutledge, the freshman redshirt left end. He also led the game in sacks with two. When it comes to interceptions, John Joyce got a pick today. Uh, Joe Cross, he also got a pick. And Tommy Bain, he got a pick today as well. In terms of kicking, Robert Clark made one field goal today out of one attempt. He was 100% and it was a 21 yard kick. So now guys, we're going to take a look at the players of the week for week 13. And on offense, we have number two, Taylor, the junior redshirt halfback out of Wisconsin. And they defeated Buffalo 42-28. He had 36 carries for 155 yards, four touchdowns, two receptions for 52 yards. Defensively, we have number 88, Williams, the junior right end out of Louisville. As they defeated USF 28-9, he had 14 tackles, seven of those tackles being for loss, three sacks, and a fumble recovery. And now, guys, we're going to take a look at the Mountain West Conference Players of the Week. In our offense, we have number 31, Morris, the senior redshirt wide receiver out of BYU. We were able to defeat New Mexico 17-10. He had four receptions for 185 yards and two touchdowns. And then defensively, we have number 45, Young, the junior redshirt left outside linebacker from Wyoming. As they lost to the Rebels 2018, he had seven tackles, five of those tackles being for loss, a sack, and two two fumble recoveries. So now guys, we made it to our last game of the season and no better way to end this is with playing versus Utah. They are six and five so far this year. They're currently on a four game winning streak. They have a B plus overall, a B minus offense, and a B defense. Man, this is going to be a pretty tough game. But anyway, guys, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.